Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MOC Tech and now today you join us to a guide on AMD Ryzen AM5 motherboard chipsets. And now when selecting a fancy new motherboard for your newly purchased Ryzen CPU, you will encounter four main options and that is X670, B650, A620 and the newest addition to the lineup, that being X870. And now, what do those names mean? For a first time buyer, this can sound pretty confusing, but what should you choose for your system? Well, sit back and relax as we dive into AMD AM5 chipsets. The biggest difference between motherboard types is in the chipset itself. Now, the chip, or in some cases, two chips, connects the CPU to other components within the system. Now, in the past, the chipset consisted of a north bridge, which connects the CPU to the RAM and the graphics card, and there was also a south bridge, which connected the north bridge to the rest of the components in your system. Nowadays, the functionality is formally attributed to the North Bridge and is directly integrated with the CPU itself, which connects directly to many components within your system. Now, Ryzen 7000 and 9000 processors connect to high bandwidth components through 28 PCIe lanes. Now, of all of these lanes on the CPUs, 16 are reserved for the graphics card, which can be separated into two eight lane connections. Four of the PCIe lanes are for M.2 drives and another four lanes are used to connect to the chipset. And now these remaining four lanes can be employed for elements such as another M.2 slot or a USB 4 adapter that connects to the CPU's integrated graphics to enable DisplayPort tunneling. However, Ryzen 8000G line of processors only have eight PCIe lanes for graphics cards with 20 in total for the entire system. Let's move on to the chipsets themselves and firstly let's take a look at A620. Now A620 motherboards use the same chip that is actually used in the B650 and X870 motherboards but with some of its connectors disabled or limited it adds support for two USB 3.1s, two USB 3s or 3.2 Gen 1 as confusing as USB Gen 3 is and six USB 2.0 ports. It also incorporates eight, P eight PCI 3.0 lanes, of which two or four can be employed for SATA ports. And now the real issue with A620 motherboards isn't really the chipset itself. It's rather that they are designed for more budget and affordable motherboards with inexpensive VRMs, otherwise known as voltage regulator modules, and do not support PCI 5.0 speeds. They also only offer a single graphics card support, though the era of multi-GPU gaming has essentially come to an end, so it's not really an issue. Multi-GPU users are only really for high-end workstation and enterprise users these days. And lastly, A620 motherboards do not allow CPU overclocking and they officially only support CPUs with a TD of up to only 120 watts. But in the modern age of how CPU boost technology works, it's not so much an issue if you can't manually overclock your CPU. Now on paper, A620 motherboards are a good fit for Ryzen 8000G lineup of processors which are meant for compact systems with fewer components and lower power consumption. In practice, a decent A620 motherboard costs about the same as a B650 one, however, so we can really only recommend them when they're on a good sale. Now let's move on to probably what is the most common chipset that I've seen used in AMD builds, and that is the B650 chipset. And now the B650 and B650E does share the same chip of x870 motherboards and that is a fully enabled promonometry 21 chip it now the b650 chipset also adds eight pci 4.0 lanes allowing for an m.2 drive to utilize the full chipset bandwidth on its own but like the a620 chipset it also includes four pci 3.0 lanes that can be used up to four sata ports 
This chipset also provides support for 6 USB 2.0s and 4 USB 3.1 ports, as well as bandwidth that can be allocated for 2 additional 3.1 ports or a single USB 3.2. And for those of you wondering, what is the difference between B650 and B650 E motherboards? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. Now, the E variant is short for, drum roll please, extreme. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a little cheesy. <laughs> but the E variant of this chipset su supports PCIe 5.0 for both the graphics and at least one M.2 drive. Now, X870 motherboards are pretty much the same as B650E, except they are required to use PC four PCIe lanes for USB 4. However, because they are newer, they come with support Wi-Fi 7 rather than Wi-Fi 6E. Also, I do want to just make a bit note of the recent controversy of Wi-Fi 7 on motherboards of how the chipset and hardware technically does support Wi-Fi 7, but apparently the Wi-Fi receiver hardware that a lot of these motherboards are packing onto the boards don't actually support Wi-Fi 7 speeds, so that's pretty interesting to, to bring up. But going back to PCIe lanes, the regular B650 board may still have a PCI 5.0 slot for an M.2 drive and allow full overclocking and will support any Ryzen processor until 2027. However, if AMD treats AM5 anyway like they treated AM4, I reckon there's a good chance that that's going to go beyond 2027. But from my personal experience, I would recommend that you pick up a B650 or a B650E motherboard, especially if you're only planning on playing games on your PC, but you don't have a need to connect many drives to the PC simultaneously. Another advantage of these balls is the ability to fit in all connectors into a compact micro ATX form factor, which is useful if you're seeking to make a compact boot for yourself. Now let's move on to what is AMD's flagship chipset and that is X670, X670E and X870E. Now I personally have a motherboard with an X670E chipset in. I've not upgraded to Ryzen 9000 or bought a new motherboard recently so I've not been able to justify a new chipset. But what is this chipset and what are the differences between the three I've just listed? Now they are very similar and all feature the same chip and are connected to another one through four PCI 4.0 lanes, providing the second chip with the same bandwidth as the one connected to the CPU. So this slightly differs from other motherboard approaches where they've used only a single chip for their chipset. This is a two chip solution, which is why X670 motherboards used to require an additional chipset fan as they used to get pretty toasty. But when these two chips are combined, this adds 12 PCI 4.0 lanes, allowing each M.2 drive to saturate the chipset's bandwidth individually, and, eight, and an additional 8 PCI 3.0 lanes for up to 8 SATA ports. Now, with SATA becoming now what most would consider a legacy connector, I know that sounds so crazy to say, it's common for those lanes to also be allocated to network cards instead, freeing up all PCI 4.0 lanes for drives and faster interface expansion cards. Now this chipset itself opens up the IO capabilities of your PC. Now this supports up to 12 USB 2.0 ports and one of three different configurations, that being 12 USB 3.1 ports, 10 USB 3.1 ports and one USB 3.2 port. All can be allocated to use eight USB 3.1 ports and two USB 3.2 ports. And now, unlike B650, all X8 or X670 motherboards feature a PCI 5.0 M.2 slot, and of course, the X670 E boards all support PCI 5.0 graphics. And if you purchase such a GPU when they finally use PCI 5.0, it probably won't even require all 16 lanes due to how much bandwidth PCI 5.0 can support. So if your board has another 16 lane PCI 5.0 slot, you'll be able to use it for up to two M.2 drives with an adapter and some motherboards even come with an M.2 to PCIe adapter as well. And with the latest addition to the chipset lineup, that being X870E, 
Um, the main difference between this is support for USB 4 and Wi-Fi 7. However, um, for most people, using USB 4 and Wi-Fi 7 isn't really a necessity, especially for desktop use, where most people will connect their devices up to a network via Ethernet. However, unless you really need USB 4.0 and Wi-Fi 7, I strongly advise just picking up a last generation X670E motherboard as they can be found for really great prices at the moment and offer a lot more value for your money compared to buying an X870E motherboard, which quite frankly are really expensive. Don't get me wrong, X670 motherboards are also very expensive, but when you're at that price point, I guess any savings you can make is worth it. But to conclude this segment on X670, X670E and X870 motherboards, I would say these are the ideal choice for content creators and professionals who consistently feel the need to add in another drive to the system or add additional peripherals to your computer. And with numerous ways to utilize the dual chipset approach in this, these motherboards, you shouldn't buy a motherboard slow, solely based on its name. Instead, make sure it has all of the features and functionality that you need out of a system. If you don't need the additional IO and storage capabilities, and PCI 5.0 capabilities of these chipsets, then as I said earlier, I would highly recommend you pick up a B650 motherboard instead. That is my short grill guide on AMD AM5 motherboard chipsets. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful in any way, shape or form. Make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate you coming and watching this video till the very end. And I hope to see you in another one soon. Goodbye for now.